Dream Team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with 12 things I've learned living in Australia as an American. Before we dive into this video, y'all know I need y'all to dive right into that subscribe button, ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Oh my god! You can drink the water from the tap basically anywhere. You feel like you're eating a popsicle stick with everything. <laughs> Was crossing the road. The amount of times I almost got hit. All of the outlets have an on and off switch. So I remember I called somebody the first time and I was like, is this busy? Like <laughs> Welcome back to the vlog. I feel like I haven't sat and talked with you guys in a while. So I figured Talk I'd to me. sit down today because I've been wanting to film this video basically since I got here and I still haven't because I feel like I've kind of been racking up a lot of these things of just things that I've noticed that's different about Australia that I didn't really expect and I don't remember seeing them in any other videos when I was looking mm. at coming here. So I figured I'd make my own list and I've kind of been keeping tabs of things the entire time I've been here since literally the first time I rode on the bus and going around the city, I just remember I was taking notes of everything that I thought was different. So I figured I'd share some of those today. So Talk going to off me. the whole bus thing, first thing I wanted to say is there's lots of roundabouts. There's way more roundabouts here than I expected. We obviously still have roundabouts in the US, but yeah. um, there's definitely more in Wollongong. And I don't know if that's just specific to Wollongong. The Aussies in the comments have to let me know because I'm not sure if it's just specific to where I'm at right now or if it's across the country. But I noticed that there's a lot more roundabouts than traffic lights, and I actually think that's a lot more efficient, and it seems to work mm. pretty well. Second one that's really cool is that- Yeah, I feel like I've se I have seen that in like many videos roundabouts, so I assume it is like across the country, and I've heard that it's more efficient. I would be nervous for a little bit about doing the roundabouts, although we do have some in America, it's not nearly as much more than often you're going to come to a four-way stop intersection or traffic lights. Uh, so you come to roundabouts, but not nearly as often. Uh, but yeah, I it just take me a while to adjust to get comfortable in doing the roundabout driving. But uh, I feel that. I feel that. Keep it rolling. You can drink the water from the tap basically anywhere. This is not something you can do in the U.S., especially no. down in New York. You cannot drink no. the tap water. Like kind of upstate where mm -hmm. I'm from, you can. I have drinking fountains and things like that. But even sometimes it's still sketchy and it's definitely not recommended. Because I go to school yeah. in Albany, the water there does not taste the same at all. And especially if you're down in New York City, you cannot drink that water. But here in Sydney, when I visited <laughs> Sydney, you can drink the water out of the tap and it's perfectly fine. I think that's really weird. And then going off of that as well is the same thing with pollution. Cause I've lived in Buffalo and Albany and then I've also visited other cities and normally at nighttime you can see like the sky is like a red or purple color and you can't see the stars when you're in a city. You kind of have to drive out of the city mm. to see the stars. In yeah, the I feel US, that. At least where I'm yeah. from. And here you can see them in Wollongong you can also see them when you're in Sydney at night, which I also think is really cool. I think that's just because Australians tend to be way more um, conscious of their environment, which I respect a lot. And then also going off of like the whole environment thing, everybody uses wooden spoons. I feel like, yeah, yeah, Australians are definitely a lot more environmentally conscious uh, about, well, more than America. They also do have a much smaller population, but still in America, our, our pollution is ridiculous. It's insanity. Uh, it's, it's, we probably got more pollution than everybody else in the world. I assume that might not be completely right, but that's my assumption, uh, without doing any research because it's, it's ridiculous over here. Tap water. I do not drink tap water. No, uh, it's not good. It's just, it don't taste like good water. Unless I guess you live in a good part of America, like a great part, which I'm not saying where I live is bad. I'm just saying I wouldn't drink the tap water. Uh, get me some bottled water. I'll drink the water from a fridge. Got one of them new fridges that does water. I'll drink that water. But I'm not like drinking it out the sink. So so I understand where she's coming from and I completely agree with where she's coming from. Shout out Australia. You can drink out of any tap. That's a dope thing to have. Like these wooden sporks um, for eating utensils when you go huh. out to eat and like you get takeaway food. You would use wooden utensils. You don't use really? plastic. Um, they always give you wooden ones, which is sometimes kind of annoying because you feel like you're eating a popsicle stick with everything. <laughs> weird taste I like feel that. Stick, which isn't the best, but I think yeah. they do that to try and limit plastic. But then I also think that's funny because all of the to-go containers are plastic. So they use plastic <laughs> to-go containers, but they use wooden Wood. utensils. So it's kind of funny. But this one's kind of funny. That is a little um, funny. 
when I first got here, I think one of the, when people ask me this question, they're like, what was the biggest difference you noticed when you, when you first got to Australia? And I'd say, honestly, it was the birds. The birds are way mm. louder. They're very squawky and very obnoxiously loud. And I remember <laughs> when I was walking on campus, my <clears throat> first week of being here, I think it was a couple days after I'd arrived, I was walking on campus and it sounded like there was a bird that was like a screaming child and I was like that? That? I don't even remember what it was but I just <laughs> I'm assuming it was it was it a kookaburra was that maybe not I'm just gonna assume that it was I just remember being very um surprised by how different the birds were as loud as they are they're super beautiful when you look yes. at them like in the grass or flying yes. around they're like very brightly colored they're green and red and blue there's like all these different types of birds and i feel like every day i'm still learning new ones it's kind of this duality of like they're a lot more squawky and obnoxious but they're also way prettier to look at and i think i noticed yes. is that there is a very I've, I've definitely seen that in videos a hundred percent australian birds are gorgeous they're absolutely gorgeous but i definitely see like videos of people like recording the birds listening to the birds while getting them up in the morning and them jokes definitely do be loud definitely a huge um, american influence on the media here so their entertainment tv shows music all of that stuff is pretty much the same as america i mm. didn't know what to expect when i came here as far as music i didn't know what they listened to i didn't know what movies they watched or tv shows they watched yeah i realized that from being here there's a very big american influence on the culture here as well so that definitely limited a lot of culture shock because i feel like media kind of makes you feel more at home if that makes sense like watching all the same shows and being able to relate to the same shows and the same characters and same songs and things like that i feel like that feel definitely like. makes it a lot um, it definitely makes it a lot easier to connect with people which i found really helpful kind of going off of that as well it's like to yeah i feel like american media is kind of influential around the world uh, some way, form, or fashion. Like, everybody, it seems like, knows what's going on in America, if that makes sense. And social media, um, being able to relate to the same trends and things like that also, I think, makes it kind of nice because you can all relate to the same things. And I think when you find that one thing that kind of brings you all together, it definitely makes connecting with people a lot easier so so then another one that i thought was interesting <laughs> that i actually did not expect at all was crossing the road it's something you just never think twice about i have grown up since i was a little kid you know they teach you to look both ways before you cross the road and always i don't even remember which way I, like americans look i think we look this way and then australians you have left to, to right this way. or it's the other way around i don't even remember no i think i have to look <laughs> No, I look this way now, and then look that way. But then, when you're in America, you have to look this way because the cars are, they because they drive on the wrong side of the yeah. road. But obviously I knew that. I was like, okay, I, I obviously know they drive on the other side of the road. But when you are crossing the street, you naturally look a certain way, and then yeah. you don't. It's just weird, and then the amount of times I almost got- You look at the, the way the traffic is coming first. You look at that, then you look the other way, then you look, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm always left, right, left. Left, right, yeah, left, right, left, not right, left, right. Yeah, left, right, left for sure feels a lot more natural for me. Sorry you had to watch that. <laughs> I hit because I naturally looked the other way on the other side of the street to see if the car was coming. And I'm like, no, the car's coming from this way and then the car would be coming. It's just, it's a whole thing. So make sure you're aware of that because I was something I genuinely, I didn't expect that at all, but I caught myself doing it several times when I got here. So I'm better now. I <laughs> I look before I cross the street now, but it's just different because it's a it's like a muscle memory thing you, you aren't even conscious about until you get put somewhere else and it's all opposite. Yeah, I thought that one was kind of funny. Another impression I got when I first got here was that Australia reminds me a lot of California. For those who don't know, I was actually born in California. My mom's from California. So we went back hey, to visit family quite a bit growing up. I don't really rock with California. But I, I just wanted to stop and say that. Yeah, so I've been to California a decent amount, and I would say that the landscape kind of looks pretty similar. The houses look pretty similar. Australia, I would just say, is more green. <laughs> California tends to be more brown because they don't get any rain or anything. So that was like a big similarity I noticed. I was like, oh wow, this reminds me a lot of California. And the temperature mm. kind of feels the same as well, except where I'm at in Australia, it feels a lot more humid than California. Mm. California is very dry heat. So uh, it yeah. probably depends on where you are though. And then a cool thing about Wollongong, where I'm at right now, Wollongong has a free bus that takes you around the entire That's city. That's so dope. So everyone can use it. So um, dope. It's, 
accessible to everybody and you kind of learn the bus stops. It took me a while to kind of get used to, honestly, it didn't even take me that long. It took me about about a week to kind of get the gist of it. Um, it took me a while to learn the stops specifically to remember which stop to get off, but you can just plug in wherever you want to go on Apple Maps and it usually will tell you the time that the bus is coming and when to be at the bus station. So that definitely makes it really helpful. That and is there's nice. There's one bus that goes clockwise and then there's one that goes counterclockwise or they go anti-clockwise, I think is what they call it. So there's 55A, which is the anti-clockwise and then 55C, which is clockwise. So I legit never do y'all caught it. That's one new thing that I've learned that uh, I've never heard in any other Australian videos. So instead of counterclockwise, y'all say anti-clockwise. That's cool. Anti-clockwise. I like it. I like it a lot. Also, the fact that there's a free bus to transport you uh, where you need to go. That's perfect, bro. That's perfect for foreigners who maybe didn't bring their car, who are maybe just visiting, uh, but don't want to like spend too much money on Ubers or anything to help get them around. Here's this bus can help take you to, I'm sure it doesn't take you all around. Maybe it does take you all around the city. I don't know. I've never been on it, uh, but gets you from point A to point B without you having to spend a dime. So that kind of helps you remember it. Yeah, but that's really helpful because I haven't had to pay much for transportation at all if you're patient enough to wait for the bus. Um, and obviously it can't take you everywhere you want to go, but it can take you most places in okay. the city. So that's okay. really helpful. Another one I question. thought was funny. I honestly was trying to figure this one out when I first got here because I didn't know if it was just the people I was around or if it was everyone. But the longer I've been here, the more this has kind of become true. Um, people don't really say bless you. Like in the same context that Americans mm. say bless you. I think Americans will say bless you more like when you sneeze and yeah in the middle of class or something if you sneeze in the middle of class your professor will usually say bless you or people around you will say bless you it's just weird like i just i just caught myself saying bless you to people or i would sneeze and then you expect like at least one person to turn to you and be like bless you but yeah people did it and i think i brought that <laughs> to my roommate and i was like do people say bless you she's like yeah but i've just noticed that people don't really say it as much as we do in america and i thought at first i was kind of like it's just not a thing i guess so yeah so i thought that was kind of interesting oh that is interesting this one's also i agree cool. with I think that i brought this up before but light switches have an on and off mm. switch i'll put a clip in kind of showing what i'm talking about but all of yeah. the outlets have an on and off switch so when you plug something in you have to physically turn the outlet on or you have to physically turn it off um, and they do that to save energy, which is pretty smart, honestly. And it's funny because most of them, because when I tell Australians here that our light switches don't have that in the US, yeah. I don't think I've ever <laughs> seen a light switch that does that. There's just power constantly going to the outlet. They're like, yeah. really? They're like, that's so weird. And it's just weird because I never thought about it. Yeah, I think it's it's to save energy, which is honestly kind of smart. Oh, <laughs> so- It is, it is smart. I, I, it, is, it is a smart thing to have. And I saw a comment that said, I think in Australia, you guys use like 240 volts through the or kilowatts or something like that i don't know and we use like 110 uh but yeah you'd be able to, i think somebody said you save a quarter of your electricity like a quarter of what you pay just by having an on and off switch just crazy like because a quarter of my electricity would be nice to save each month that'd be very helpful so that that would be nice if we had an on and off switch this one also caught me by surprise because, again, it's just something I never heard anybody talk about before. Um, but the phone dial tone when you call somebody in Australia, it sounds like our busy, sounds like the American busy sound. Oh, wow. I'll, I'll clip of it in if I can. Let me see. It sounds like when you call somebody and that's are on like the phone a, with somebody else in the U.S. That sounds like a regular dial tone. I don't know. That would, that would kind of sound like a regular dial tone to me. I don't know if this is making sense, but yeah, that really threw me out because I remember I called somebody the first time and I was like, is this busy? Like I was confused and then somebody picked up and I was like, what the heck was that? Yeah, and then when I've told, when I've showed people here what our ringtone sounds like, they're like, what the heck? That sounds weird. So it's just another little thing that I was just like, what the heck? That's so random. So the last one I'm going to say for this video and kind of came as a small shock to me is that there aren't kangaroos and koalas everywhere. <laughs> I'm the impression that Americans think that there's kangaroos and koalas basically crawling about everywhere. And there's not. I haven't seen, I've only seen one little tiny kangaroo. I saw Joey jump in front of our car once at nighttime. 
So I didn't even get to see him very, very well. So I've only seen one kangaroo in all of my time being here so far. I'm hoping that I might have one chance at seeing them. That'd um, be we'll dope. See. I think that's just because of where I'm at in Wollongong, because I'm in a, more of like a city, and you don't really get kangaroos in cities. So that I think makes it's sense. just because I haven't gone further south, or I haven't gone south enough and like in the bush to really see them. Ooh. But I was sad I didn't see them in the Blue Mountains. Don't go in that like, bush. They're just not as they're just not out and about as much as they are talked about in media. So that kind of was a little that was a little disappointing. But I think again that's also just where I live in Australia right now. But the koalas, koalas are an endangered species and they are not roaming the trees out and about. Um you only even Australians can only really see them in the zoo um because they are very endangered. So but anyways that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you guys for watching and let me know if you'd like me to make a part two because I still have about half of a list left of things to say that i've written down but oh, we need a part like two today video, like and subscribe and comment anything you want to know and i will see you guys in the next one peace out we definitely gonna need a part two laura definitely gonna need a part two uh but that was dope i got to learn a couple of things that i didn't know about australia that were new to me and i watched so many videos on australia i feel like i know a decent amount but i know that to learn everything i want to learn i'm gonna have to actually go there uh, but that's all we got for this one. If you guys have a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon, drop it in the comment section, or in the description section, there's a premium request link. It's your boy, Dania, out.